Two important tools used in solving confidence interval and hypothesis testing problems is the connection between these three distributions and we use R to do some calculations. Let's look at another example. Here uh, the problem is talking about some hemoglobin count is normally distributed with the population mean Aha, uh -huh. we know the population mean for healthy adult women. Uh, suppose that a female patient uh, had 20 laboratory tests during the past year and her average was such and such. Uh, is there evidence that her average hemoglobin count is not 14? It's not the same as, as uh, what that population is. Okay, so in this case then, this alternative hypothesis is as it always is. It's mu is equal to something. In this case, we think that uh, the, the question is, is she the same as the, as the population mean or not? And uh, we want uh, mu is uh, not equal to the 14 in this case. So this is going to be a two-tailed test. Uh, so we need to find a test statistic and make some decisions uh, about that. So let's begin to look at some of the evidence here. Uh, we've got uh, how many tests were done here. It looks like there's 20. So that's the sample size. Okay. So here we are with the sample size of 20. We're thinking that the null hypothesis is claiming, okay, the population is going to be 14. Okay. Do we know the uh, standard deviation of the population? We don't. But we do know her uh, 20 samples she ended up with a 17 up here, 17 point something is what her average was. So that uh, looks like it's above for sure. Um, the null hypothesis, 17.05. Okay. And we know a standard deviation, S is equal to 0 0.92. Okay, the sample standard, the standard deviation of her sample is 0 0.92. Okay, so that's going to allow us to take this score, her, her average, and reproduce that down here as a T value. It's just going to be the 17.09, 17.05 minus the null hypothesis mean divided by 0 0.92 divided by the square root of uh, n, which was 20. Okay. So what that's doing is counting the number of standard errors that we uh, that uh, her score is away from uh, the hypothesis uh, mean, the null hypothesis uh, mean. So we can use R, of course, to do that calculation real quickly. I'm going to assign that to a an object called T, so it's going to be something divided by something, and 17.05 minus 14 on the top, and a 0 0.92 divided by the square root of something, and that's a 20. Okay, so there's the T value that we we're interested in, and in fact, that's one of the questions that they're asking uh, us to produce here, the test statistic. So let's take that, 
and put it right in there. Okay, great. So now we need to answer the question, is this evidence that her average HC is not uh, 14 and we want to do that at the 1% the level? Okay, so the issue here is, let me uh, grab this other color. The issue here is we want the significance level to be 1%, but it's a two-tailed test because all that we're interested in is, is uh, the null hypothesis is that it's not equal. So we need to put that half of that 1% up here in this tail and half of that 1% down here in this tail. So a half of 1% is 0 0.0. 0, 0.05 up here and point zero zero five down here. So the question is, does this T value that we calculated, kind of doing a classical test here, does it end up in one of these green areas or does it end up kind of in this safe area? So that's all that we've got to to do is figure that out. That's going to be easy to know because our T is up in this right hand side so the question is does it end up in this top green area or or not. So let's find this value right here and we'll just be able to compare that to our test statistic. So that particular value is, is easy to find with R. Where's my R here? Okay. Because it's going to be a QT of 1 minus 0 0.0... I'm sorry, 0 0.005. Oh, did you see that error? Because we were looking at a 1%. At a Let me correct that error. This should have been a 0 0.0... 0, 0.05 okay because it needed to be half of 1% and I was <laughs> alright be, be careful there uh, 0 0.005 0, with the degree of freedom is the sample size was 20 so the degree of freedom is 19 Okay, that's going to be the, the comparison value there. And it's a 3. And notice that this other was a, a, a 14. So, so that T value, this T value right here ended way, way, way up here. Okay. And this value is is three. So the the p value would have been extremely small. This little tail up above there. So the p value is low. The null hypothesis must go. So so it we're going to. That's very strong evidence that it's not equal to fourteen. Is this evidence that our average is not fourteen? Yes, very strong evidence that it is, as a matter of fact. So, let's just check those answers. <laughs> Sorry. The web worker had gone to sleep. Okay, so there we are.